Well, you know, living through a pandemic has heightened the awareness for many parents around the issues of health and safety in the schools that their children attend. Joining us to discuss the state of our schools and how we can make our schools healthy and safe is Rachel Hodgson, president and CEO of the International Well Building Institute. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Thanks so much for having me, Sandy. Of course. Well, you know, this is a concern now, and I know that there is a state of the schools for 2021. Uh, tell us exactly what is going on with the safety in our schools, because we're really so much more aware now. That's right. Well, the condition across the nation of our school facilities is pretty dire. We were already facing a national emergency, and then COVID-19 took a long-term bad situation with our school buildings and made it truly urgent. Mm. We've just published the 2021 State of Our Schools report, along with our partners at the 21st Century School Fund and the National Council on School Facilities. And there we shine a light on severe and under in, and severe and chronic underinvestment to the tune of $85 billion a year. And that's eroding the country's ability to provide safe, healthy, and efficient schools. Wow, that is shocking to me. Actually, both my kids, one's out of college, one's still in college, so I know that impacts them as well. Uh, so what can parents do? What can, what can we do? Well, we're at a really pivotal moment right now because there's $82 billion that's on the table for improvements to school facilities. That's in the infrastructure bill that's currently being debated in Congress. So parents, teachers, and concerned citizens should pick up the phone and contact their senators and their representatives to make sure that that money stays in the bill and goes to the communities that need it most. Today, the federal government only picks up about 1% of total costs for school facilities improvements and construction. And that leaves states and school districts in a position that is sometimes mathematically impossible for them to be able to provide the funding for adequate school facilities that make for a 21st century education. Wow, absolutely. And of course, all of us know that safety is really primary in sending our children uh, every day off to their schools. So uh, what are some good examples? Surely there are some institutions and schools that are doing good jobs out there. Uh, what are some good examples? Yeah, I mean, there are absolutely some terrific examples, especially when it comes to new construction. We've seen states all across California get LEED certified or um, CHIPS accredited as healthy school facilities, and that's a really good start. Um, but in California, across the state, we're under investing by nearly $11 billion in public school facilities every year. And so at that level of underfunding, districts in California simply can't meet stewardship standards for health, safety, and sustainability. Even those new construction projects are slipping really quickly into a state of disrepair. But I think the most jarring statistic of all is that the most vulnerable communities in California are affected the most. So for example, California's high poverty districts receive a startling $3.4 million per school less than low poverty districts. And that's just really not fair. Oh my gosh, those are horrible statistics for our beautiful state of California, Rachel. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, we are concerned, of course. So where can we go for more information? You can visit stateofourschools2021.org, and there you can download a free copy of the full report and also a state-specific profile so that you can find out exactly what's happening in your neck of the woods. So important. Great information to share. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks for having me.